Chapter 4 The After Death of the Master Omra From everything that you have heard, you can see that the Master Omram was able to develop some special abilities that um, he couldn't change people uh, into some magical beings of light, but he did his best to bring a lot of knowledge, to influence people to, to evolve positively, and himself doing all this work, he was able to develop some special abilities. But once you're dead, you're dead. As I had been learning with him quite a lot, um, I used to have uh, also students who, in martial arts, were asking me after the lesson some questions, complicated questions. Um, sometimes it was about the energy and I couldn't answer, but some of the times uh, it was about why is my mother dead? Uh, you let me to death to inquire about this? They were asking questions, sometimes it was really hard to answer, but I wanted to answer to help and also because I always loved the knowledge. So I was calling Omra, we were talking on the telephone, but I did less and less because he was getting really tired and old and ill. So at one point I just didn't do it anymore. And after that he died. So uh, we are now in 1988 in the story. And so Omram died two years ago. <clears throat> and I hadn't been in contact with him for about even three years because the last year I was not in contact anymore. He was too weak. And um, I am a teacher, so I teach from from um, uh, September to June, and we are now in July 1988, and I always practice very hard, always. So very often I am in the part of France called Ardèche, which is in the mountains, and I go to run, I go to practice, and then I used to practice a lot of free climbing. And I'm going to do a cliff that is really tough, really, really hard. And I'm going to win. I am um, uh, dressed in shorts, n nearly naked with the shoes and the shorts. I'm sweating. I am alone in the mountains. I am on the top of a little mountain um, in the middle of the forest. There's the wind, the sun, my victory, the muscles, everything. And there are I start to practice chi kongs and exercises like this. And suddenly <clears throat> I did something that is not at all part of my existence because I was not at all open on that. Suddenly I stop, I am alone in the mountains and I start to speak with Omram. And I say, Omram, Master Omram, now you're dead. You are playing with the angels, you are in heaven, you enjoy, you have been suffering so much. I'm really, really happy for you. But what do I do myself with my students? What do I do for my students? How do I answer now? And of course, there's nothing. So I just think a little bit and say, you don't care, do you? I understand, I understand. All right, doesn't matter, it was just like this. But I was not praying, I was more nearly arguing, you know. Hey, you're dead, it's cool, but uh, what do I do now for my students? And then, <coughs> of course, I'm not going to speak about this, because it was like a bit stupid to work like this, you know, spontaneous but stupid. I go back home after that. It was after the, so a big session of uh, very dangerous free climbing. Then I go down. And I go back home, running, of course, because it's my practice, running, practicing the forest, uh, kicking, and everything else. And in September, it is the beginning of the new year. So I go um, with my girlfriend, we go to a house where we're invited to stay there um, for the first lessons, because it was very, very far away from my own house, 200 kilometers away. And there, in the evening, there is Corinne and, I think, Jackie, I've forgotten, I'm not sure. And um, the girl 
is very interested in Ouija. And I found that honestly pitiful, lamentable. And my girlfriend, she goes as well. And I remember I was in the living room, reading a book of Omram, in fact. And there are three at the table, working with a glass, a glass, you know, with the Ouija, you have um, uh, yes and no in the middle of the circle, and you have a circle with the letters. And you're supposed to have the glass, you put your finger, your index on it, the three of them, and the glass is supposed to turn around yes, no, or going to some letters to, to, to write down something. And they do that <coughs> for, for a little while, and they're very excited with that, and I was watching them from far, and I found that them but lamentable, pitiful. Really, I was ashamed for them. And um, they were very happy because sometimes the glass was moving like two centimeters. Oh my God, maybe it's a yes, maybe it's a no. Oh, this may be P, P, P. What could it mean, P? You know, I found that so lamentable. And after stopping reading, after, I don't know, one or two hours, they spent a lot of time with it, nearly nothing. I, I stood up and I said, okay, but really to make fun of them, I said, okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. And, um, but it was really to make fun of them. I wanted to do a joke or whatever. So I go, <clears throat> and because I worked a lot with the Master Omram, just in case, you know, I call on me a channel of light for complete protection so that there's nothing dark that can be manifested or I wanted to be protected for me and the others and also, of course, to make fun of them. I sit down and when I put my finger on the glass, the glass is moving extremely quickly. So quickly that uh, one was trying to write down some, 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 some stuff, but it was going so quickly, sometimes he had no, wait, 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 it's going too quickly to write that down and so on. And I wanted to make fun of them, but when it goes so quickly, I said, what's this joke? Because you have to understand now we are four people. If somebody wants to manipulate, it's going to be really hard because the others, they have to follow. You have to harmonize a uh, craziness between four people, unless everybody is following something that is not one of, one of us. <coughs> and there I'm very surprised. So instead of joking, what's this joke? And I say, um, uh, after, after a first contact, who are you? What is your name? And it's writing O-M-R-A. A M. Okay. So I said, What was the name of your school? And it's written B O N F I N. Okay. So <clears throat> in which town was it? And it's written Frejus. So information that um, at least the, the capo they don't have. And I, I could look at my girlfriend, she was very, very surprised. Uh, very uh, completely lost, you know. So, well, what's that? And the first time, it's just a contact like this. And, you know, it was not any more jokes. But what's that? And the girl, she was, the other girl, Corinne, she was terrified. She never saw a glass moving like this. She said, it's really working. <laughs> and um, so, after that, <clears throat> I think, what is this joke? So, um, I think about it and I start to write down some questions, technical questions. And next week, when I go back working in the same town, same people, same place, I say, okay, we're going to do a new session. And I'm going to ask questions that are more technical, just to unmask the joke. And honestly, I don't remember now because they were technical but simple questions. I would say the test is completely, um, it's a complete success. Then you have to understand that I knew uh, Master Omram as a very old man, especially at the end when he was weak and so on. So after some questions, I said, okay, Master, I'm going to wait because I don't want you to get too tired because it is what I did, it's my natural so on. And he answered, I remember, I am a young man. And why is it? Because you are old when you're dead. 
when you are when you're alive. But once you go back to the life after the death, the old age doesn't exist anymore. So I was behaving in the way I don't want you to get tired. But <clears throat> when I said that, you have to understand I followed my ideas because I was used to be with him being old. And to answer I am a young man, he has to understand the mistake that I do in my head and to answer in a very clever way. And I am there and I found the last answer brilliant because he was able to understand the projection that I did. <clears throat> then I'm even more troubled. But at the same time, uh, you have to know that the Ouija is a manifestation that is like a sort of physical manifestation. At one point I remember that the man was really afraid the husband, so he went to sleep. So said, okay, okay, now it's too much for me. And we went on one three by three, the, the glass was moving a little bit less quickly. Um, so I knew that the quantity of people was needed to practice Ouija correctly. But at the same time, I want to go seriously into the matter. So I thought, what can we do? What can we do? And um, I decided with my girlfriend, we do Ouija, just both of us in our house. So we start to do that. One day I am in my house in Ardèche and we put yes and no. And after that, when it's fine, you put the alphabet. So we put just yes and no. And we wanted, we prepared the alphabet, but it's, it's a pile on the side. And uh, I start to see if the glass is moving. It's moving slower, but it's moving. And then I say, Master Omram, is it you? And the class goes around yes. Can I ask you questions, Master? The glass is moving. Yes. Oh, then can we put the alphabet, Master? And the glass is moving and saying no. So there, uh, I thought there must be a mistake. So I asked again, can I ask you questions, Master? And the glass goes around. Yes. So can we put the alphabet, Master? The glass is saying no. And the glass is not moving anymore. So what is that? So I said it's a complete failure. It's, it's, it was new, completely new for me. So I was trying to understand what we're facing and so on. <coughs> and from that, in the evening, we speak and we say, no, it's complete failure, blah, blah, blah. And we go to sleep. And when we go to sleep, at one point, my girlfriend is sleeping and she has a lot, sort of uh, epilepsy but very, very soft. She's moving, shaking very, very softly in a very harmonious way, but she's moving in a weird way. So I try to wake her up, but she doesn't come. Um, I take her pulsations, and I could see, I am osteopathy, it's easy for me, I could see that she was really sleeping. So I, said, uh, so I try to wake her up, and suddenly, knowing that she had a very voice like that, and the master was talking like that, she speaks with his voice. There, you start to be in the exorcist film or something like this, you know. Yeah, there's, you, you look at your girlfriend, but she's talk, talk, talking with the voice of the master. Oh, bloody fucking... <laughs> and I said, I don't know how you do that, but you stop. It's not funny. Stop it. It's not respectful. Stop it. And the master goes on talking. He said, you wanted to ask me questions? I am there to answer your questions. Of course. <laughs> and then you understand, yes, no, yes, yeah, logical. It doesn't need the alphabet. You want to ask questions? I'm there to answer. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> so I said, after a little surprise, you know, it's you need 10 minutes to adapt to the situation. And then I said, okay, let's cool down. You are the Master Omra. You died two years ago. And you come to talk to me. Why not? And I said, but why? Why do you come to talk to me? How could it be possible? And he said, and that is very important to understand, he said, because you are lost. And when he said because you are lost, it doesn't mean that I am doomed. It means that I didn't have the contact with another master to go further into my evolution. So as I understood that in this way, I said, okay, I know, okay, it's quite correct, I'm lost. And then I said, but I'm not the only one to be lost. 
why, why do you come to talk to me? And he said, because um, you are honest. And I said, as I am honest, I said, okay, I'm lost and honest. I know that I'm clear and honest, but I'm not the only one to be, uh, to be uh, lost and honest. And there he laughed. And I think that it is something really important to understand. He said, you would be very surprised to know how many people are really honest. How many people are able to face the honesty. And, uh, hmm, okay. and he said, but there is something else. Said, then tell me. And he said, the manifestation of your honesty, of your pure heart. Said, tell me. And there he spoke about something. Already you are facing a, a weird situation. It's not completely classical. And then he's going to say something that no one can know. Because I was at the top of the mountain alone two months before. And he says, because you have been calling me at the top of the mountains when you were succeeding in your courage, your power, your strength, you have been calling me and you have been asking nothing for yourself, everything for your students. And by this act of love and courage, you open a channel of light that allows me to come and teach you everything. And when he told me that, <clears throat> I remember, even if for you it looks dramatical, I cried a lot. Not because it was dramatical, but because I was caught myself in my honesty. And then he started to come regularly for about two years and a half, something like this. And uh, he stayed two or three hours each time. And he was giving me lessons, I was preparing questions, he was answering, and I was recording everything. Once he was away, I was writing down everything that he said. I was analyzing each sentence regarding psychology, regarding many books that are existing. I was going to the books and I built a complete uh, dictionary. Each time that he spoke about the finger there, the color here, the chakra there, <clears throat> I was writing down, making links to the other words and so on to put everything together. And then I was taking the complete collection of Omran, Pitedon, of everything I could find to, to put everything together. It was really a university of light. Then I've been facing <clears throat> an evolution in this story. For instance, when I, when he used to come during the night, um, I was um, uh, woke up by himself. He was calling me, E.G., E.G., and I was up, waking up, turning on the, the tape recorder. Yeah, I know, in that time it was the tape recorder, and recording everything. And with the time, and I did not realize, with the time, I was sleeping, I woke up, put on the tape recorder, and the master started to speak. And I didn't realize that I was linking myself to that kind of manifestations without noticing that, working, adapting, learning. And, and what is very important is that I realized with the time that we're working in a sort of bubble of energy, if you want, built on my students, honesty, learning. And it was this field that was worked a lot to be absolutely clear. And the people who know me today, you can see that everything that I teach, that I do, is based on that as well. The, I am this bubble of energy, this body of energy. Honesty, students, commitment, logical. So you're going to say, hey, hey, guy, you're talking that you're learning with the master who is dead through your, <coughs> your friend who is sleeping, and you're, you're talking about being logical? But if the manifestation is weird, I was very often going to Master Omram and saying, you told me that, I found this, it doesn't work together. And then he told me, you're a terrible student. And then he was explaining it's because of that level, because of this, because of that. But very often I did my best, Omram or not, sort of spirit or not through my girlfriend. If he's wrong, I was fighting to, to unmask everything. One day, you, you have to visualize a little bit the situation. You are a little bit touched by the manifestation of Omram because now it makes quite a lot for the same guy, you know, in your life. 
So I used to have a system of um, um, a system of electricity where I could put like quarter of an hour when I was going to sleep and to have the alarm clock in the morning with the same system. And I was plugging a conference, well, so when he was alive, of the Master Omaram. So I was falling asleep with the Master Omaram and I was waking up with the end of the conference in the morning. <clears throat> and one day I thought, that's funny because the Master Omram always comes in the night in the darkness. And I started to build something about this. And it's going to be a bit stupid in the story, but at the same time, you know, facing that, you try to use everything. So I said, it never comes when the light is there, which is stupid because my girlfriend is sleeping during the night, usually, you know. So it's logical that it is always during the night. But still, I built something where I started to worry. I say nothing. Next morning, he comes at the sunrise. So we're still sleeping, I wake up, I look at the, at the light, I turn on the, the, the tape recorder, and it starts talking. And he's starting to explain uh, also that it is very good to analyze everything, to be aware of everything, to check everything. And that's why he comes now to bring the proof that he's respecting my, my, my protocol of worrying, and that uh, he can do even better. And as it is the morning, the, the electricity is starting. The voice of Omram, while he's talking through my girlfriend, you have the voice of Omram on a big tape recorder that I had on the side with a conference. But it's very loud. I did it on purpose. It was to wake up. So I, I, uh, I jump out of the bed and I come to, to, to stop the conference before having the time to, to, to analyze because I don't want my girlfriend to wake up and I don't know how she's going to feel if she wakes up in the middle of a session like this. So I just have the time to have a very short sentence that I'm going to stop. And only when I stop, I realize the sentence. And it is, the sentence was, and the spirit manifests through matter. And I go, I stop, I come back, and I was wondering if my girlfriend was awake or not, but Omram is still there, he's laughing a little bit, and he said, isn't it funny? The spirit manifests through matter. It's exactly what was happening. So technically talking, you have to understand that as the conference, I will listen to the conference quarter of an hour, it's impossible to calculate when exactly the tape is going to stop in the evening. So I have no control at all on what's going to start in the morning. And through all of this, I have been facing a situation where I learned uh, that Omram could act through my girlfriend, but also through other things, you know? Like uh, one day I was wondering about something, I, I put something on the chimney where I had different books. There's one book falling down, um, a book of Omram, open in the middle. I pick it up, I go, oh, that's what I read, and it was exactly the answer of my question. At one point, my God, I'm going to pee my trousers if we go on like this. Because you see a lot, a lot of things like this. And <clears throat> I have to specify that um, at that time it was absolutely secret. No one knew the smaller thing. It was totally secret. And the master said, you have to work in your intimacy. If people know, they will start to ask you questions. And when, if you're under the pressure of answering questions, you might make mistakes. So it's good that you work in your complete intimacy. You're facing something. It's an honest protocol. You work in secret. And I read, I did a complete dictionary of more than 1,000 pages, you know, on, and a lot of links to other words. And when I was writing, I was going to this word, to this word, to this word. I had a complete pile of papers. Yes, it was before the computer and everything else, or everything written. With a computer, it would have been maybe easier. And <coughs> I was learning five, six hours a day on that, still practicing, teaching, blah, 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 but learning all of this without saying a word to anyone. And I was surrounded and people started to be very impressed, um, even sometimes afraid, because I was surrounded by something very, very magical. 
I remember uh, a guy, I, after that I took a house, a little house in, in Lyon, which is a big town in France where I was teaching martial arts. And I have a friend of mine, a student, he comes and we started to talk and uh, he said, uh, uh, we, we spoke about spirit, but without specifying what I knew, and said, so, for me, I don't believe in the spirit, in the wind manifestations. And there, when he said that, you have a terrible voice saying, what do you want, you, you simple human, disturbing me? And he became white. He was, you know, going down on his chair. He was looking up everywhere. He was totally terrified. And in fact, it was my kid who was putting a story in the bedroom, you know, with uh, the sound very loud. But it was exactly at the right time. And stories like this, I had thousands, thousands, you know. I remember that one day I had a student of yoga who was quite old and I thought, okay, she can be the first one to know because she's old, soon she will die, she needs to know. That's what I decided. So when I was in her house, I was invited very often, we went to eat and I, I told her, I'm going to, to show you something. I had to type, I said, I'm going to show you something. And when we eat, after eating, I noticed that we, we took only quarter of an hour to eat or 20 minutes to eat. And I said, it's impossible. We took our time. It's, it's impossible. And in fact, there was no electricity anymore in the house. So as I knew quite well about electricity, I said, I'm going to help you. And I go to the fuses. And what I do in a case like this, I just put one fuse and I see if it's working. The other fuse I take off and so on, just one fuse each time, and you see which one is not, is refusing something because of bad contact or whatever. And I put everything, and everything is accepted. One after the other. So I said, no, no, every, everyone is refused. It's, it's refused on each, and say, well, what is this shit? I, mean, it was, I, I never saw that, and so on. And I'm really lost with my knowledge of electricity. I am in the basement, and at one point I understand. And I say, okay, I understand. Master, she mustn't hear. I made a mistake. Okay, she doesn't, I don't show anything. And then I tried the electricity, I swear, I put everything up and it was working. The, uh, uh, and after that, we had a dessert with my friend, and she never came back to what I wanted to show. She even didn't ask. She forgot completely. And you have a lot of stuff like this. And when you have all of this together, at one point you cannot say, even if my girlfriend is crazy that she's doing something fantastic, that she's a ventriloquist, I don't know what. Um, I mean, at one point you have accumulation of too many things. It's just totally impossible. Of course, it is hard because I remember that in Ardèche, in my house, uh, I had a neighbor who was very old and boring, so I am talking with the Master Omram during the night. He's talking to me about what's happening after the life, how the soul is evolving, the structure of the cosmos, regarding the structure of the, of the souls and what's happening, the intelligence, you know, a bit uh, limit, uh, Star Trek, Stargate, or whatever you want. And I go outside, it's the morning, I go to buy some bread, and my neighbors my neighbor caught me because I didn't park well the car that was a little bit too much on the left hand side and you cannot do that because after that when I go with my car and you look at him and say where do you come from who are you you baboon I mean <laughs> so um, it was hard to to, um, to 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 deal with all of this one day we go to the forest because the master Omram asked me to do a special exercise with my girlfriend who didn't remember anything so she was used but she had she had no knowledge at all and we go to the forest and arrive in the forest in Ardèche and I said yeah but I know that there are special places in the forest good or bad places how do I know where we have to do that how do I know where do I go and there suddenly <laughs> a wind quite violent for some seconds in the forest and there is a fruit falling down just in the center of a little circle and I look at that oh thank you and I go there 
and my friend, she stayed outside of the forest, like frozen. It's not normal, it's not classical, it's not classical, and I had to go back to it. No, but relax, normal, it's just uh, like this, you know. So I was living in a world where things were becoming like, sort of alive, things answering and so on. And one day, the Master Omram said, I will not come anymore. And there I was very sad because it was such a way, so, so fantastic, such a fantastic manifestation. You have no idea what I have been learning for two years and a half, what I was developing. And when he told me I will not come anymore, I was really, really disappointed and sad. I was about to say, oh, come on, you're not going to die again. <laughs> and um, he said, but don't worry, you have been learning about my presence. And said, what do you mean? What do you mean? I don't understand. He said, it's too tiring now for your girlfriend. I've been using her the maximum that she, her body could accept, but now she's too weak and too tired. It's too difficult for her because she's not of that vibration and it's really hard. So now, when I am away, you will sit down. You will call me. And I will come directly within yourself. You will not go, I will not need now to use a voice that you can hear and record, you will have something private. So it will not be so spectacular, but you will receive things directly from the inside. And, um, and uh, at the beginning I didn't really believe in that, I was a bit lost, and uh, I just uh, applied what he said. And I discovered that I, could, I couldn't, at the beginning, receive a very long lesson as I did with my girlfriend. It was only uh, two or three minutes, at the beginning at least. But it was, as he said, much more intimate because I was directly in contact with something. It was not more anymore outside with a very weird manifestation, but less spectacular for anyone who is there but much more fantastic because now you are receiving the light within yourself. It's not only the explanations, it's also the intensity, the love, the, the, the magical stuff of all this. And through that, I started to develop something different, very different. And it improved more and more and I developed something of high intensity with him directly um, like this. And with the time, we'll go back to that to, in other chapters. After that, I was able to teach my girlfriend and to protect her from these manifestations. And after that, I was able in my life to have direct manifestations within myself. But also, we started again with my girlfriend. But maybe two years later, which was also a new step of evolution because as the Master Omram was always open that I could check, sometimes I was receiving something, then he was going through my girlfriend, let's say next night or two nights later, and he was saying, as I told you the last time we met, and he was going on in the conversation that I shared with no one from the inside. So there, if my girlfriend was uh, using a scam, she's extremely, extremely talented. You know, it's also telepathy and so on. And when you have all of this, everything that people can hear about the theory of the light, of the life after the life, of uh, uh, it's not anymore theory. And when I speak with people and they say, yeah, maybe one never knows, you have to smile gently because it would be like saying to a champion of gymnastic, Olympic gymnastic, that maybe it could be possible to do a somersault. The guy does that every day, you know. Oh, yeah, maybe it's possible, yeah, of course, yeah. One day if you want, come to my gymnasium, I will show you. And, and the, the knowledge of spirituality, of the light, of the contact with the energy, and so on, it is not anymore something that is only simple theory. It is the essence of what you live. And to finish, one day, <coughs> um, 
I was also, um, um, so it was some years later, and we're in Paris. It is uh, Christmas. And my, fa my, my brother bought some uh, fireworks. So he does a lot of fireworks and so on, you know. And we are, it's more or less midnight in, the, in, in Paris, in the garden. And um, after that, the, firework, the fireworks are over. So everybody goes back home and I say, oh, I will stay two or three minutes in the garden, I'm coming. And there in the garden, I turn to Omram and I say, I wish you a happy Christmas, Master Omram. And then at that point, you have something going through you. You can imagine like a, nearly a physical body, but it's not physical, that is going through you. And for one or two minutes, you are there. Wow. It is. It's not a knowledge in that case. It's really like a cosmic hug. A little bit improved in the protocol of the classical hug. You know, when you hug somebody, you can feel the love, the heat of the person, the, the, what he means. There it's more or less the same, but it's a little bit more intense. And for one or two minutes, you are like exploding of joy. It's wow. It's so intense, so fantastic. So all of this doesn't make any more the spirituality like a theory, but like a reality that is part of everything, that has always been protecting in this bubble of honesty, commitment, giving to the others, being clear, checking everything, to be always sure. When I went to the first school <coughs> of martial arts, I learned a sentence that was... Um, the one who wants to do something finds out a way. The one who doesn't want to do anything finds out an excuse. And it became a leitmotiv of my complete existence. Always, always, always. And one day, in the first two years, the master is saying, Are you ready to do anything to learn and to improve? Well, I said, Give me ten dragons, I kill them. Give me twenty, I kill ten of them, and I... I, I, I ride the others, whatever you want. And I said, okay. So, I'm going to send you your mother and you're going to talk with her. <gasps> what? <laughs> I said, no, the dragon's fine, but the mother, no, 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 no. And he insisted, he said, you have to clarify some stuff for your youth. You have to work seriously. You don't want to work like uh, new age people. You want to work seriously. And I said, I'm sorry, Master, that is absolutely impossible. And he just answered, find out a way. Oh, fuck. He's using the key sentence of your existence here. Uh, and after that, um, I, I was caught, and uh, it's the morning, we have the breakfast, and I receive a phone call. It's my mom, I can come to spend two weeks here. So I was, oh, no, you. Okay, you're welcome. <sighs> And when you put all of this together, there is no way to, 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 to deny all of this. Uh, a young friend, he was challenging me because I, I, again, I didn't speak at the beginning about Omram, but about the fact that things can in exist. And he's telling me, oh, come on, so you're telling me that we have ghosts and that they can speak and so on, but with, I didn't specify. So I was just talking, but not saying myself, I do it. You know, so I was just talking uh, like this. And, um, and he made me really tired. So I had a book, I remember, and I said, yes, of course they can. And I took a book, I just opened at any page, and I, I said, they are talking to you. And I gave the book. And the guy, he took the book, and uh, he started to read with a big smile to make fool. Then he lost his smile, then he became pale, then he closed the book. He never told me what he read, but he never came back to the topic. <laughs> so when you see things like this, you have the feeling that there's something somewhere. You know? Um, okay, that's what I can explain. Do you have any questions? Because I am with some people. Any commentary or questions? I know that it can look very weird, but at the same time, unless I invent in a very sophisticated way, you can see that there are a lot of stuff like 
pieces of a puzzle going together and when you have for instance the mushroom saying uh, no alphabet you say what and so on you know and when you put everything together you you can see and now that I said this story in 2017 that I am with three people who know me uh, and they see me acting today teaching and so on Re regarding what I do my style and so on is this story coherent with what I do now or is it completely a contradiction and completely science fiction regarding my style my honesty my commitment and so on it's coherent completely completely coherent I, I mean I am surprised by some stuff you said but mm -hmm. just because i i don't i couldn't imagine that they were could be possible but it, it's not surprised that you explain things like this because it it goes in the into the same direction and even more i, I have a question mm -hmm. how i don't know how to express it more or less but when i hear that and i say okay i take it i think directly I would like to do that. I would like to maybe be able to speak with my grandmother, for instance, or with someone, because... Well, I'm not sure that your grandmother has a lot of interesting stuff to say. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, yeah, an yeah. idea, because I don't have a reference, so I need to find someone. I mean... Yeah, yeah. but it's completely possible. It's even worse. It's not very difficult. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> no, it means that... It, you cannot most of the time because you are limited by the system and so on so finally it didn't you can take my story it didn't happen to me before because I didn't ask for mm -hmm. when I asked for everything was organized you know this couple where I have been at the beginning I had never been to their places she started this girl she started to speak about Ouija and so on I asked for nothing because it was not at all my cup of tea Mm -hmm. So I was not at all into that. It happened because because I said yes, I want to have some answers mm -hmm. to help my students. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of things that are not happening, not because they are impossible, but they are impossible in your mind. You know. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, when I saw uh, Star Wars with Yoda when he's teaching to Luke Skywalker, he's some, saying something like this. He says. Uh, um, when he's asked to, to move a vessel and blah blah blah, he's saying um, it's this one is too big, it's different, I cannot do it and he says, no, only different in your spirit and after that the master Omram <laughs> Yoda does it and um, and he's moving the vessel by uh, his magical power and, and Luke Skywalker comes back and he's looking at that and says, master, master I, I, I just can't believe it and Yoda says, that's why you fail. Mm. And uh, even if it's just a film, I found that really cool because it's really the spirit of the teaching. You have no idea of what you can do. You have no idea of what is at your disposal. But the world taught you that you're a slave, that you're limited, that you're small. So of course you have some stuff to learn. You have to learn a bit of concentration. You have to learn to filter some stupidities that could come to your mind, uh, some <coughs> fears and so on. But otherwise, um, I would say that telepathy with a human is extremely difficult because we are extremely chaotic. So when I want to say, uh, can you give me a piece of cake? In, by telepathy, at the same time I'm going to think, but I don't want to eat too much because I don't want to get fat and I don't know if you're going to listen to me and uh, do you really like me, are you ready to help me uh, when I ask something, maybe I don't have a good concentration. That's what you send as a message. You don't send only, uh, can I have a piece of cake? Mm -hmm. You send all of this at the same time. So of course, to, to read something like this, you have to be really cool. And strangely enough, the energy that is used by some entities, it's a message that is one million times stronger and clear. Mm -hmm. So if you open a little bit your mind, you would be very surprised about what you can do. So I understand it's not only but to be to have faith on this, it's one key. Faith well, on this faith. and faith on you Both. as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in your clear desire to learn. Mm -hmm. Because when you call for something, and that is very important, it's like a phone number. 
if I had been asking, I would imagine, uh, teach me to, to, to be uh, super sexual, I'm not against sex, but then I could have an entity of sex coming as well. Mm-hmm. Or give me a lot of money, and would have an entity that is obsessed about money, that was obsessed in his life, and it comes back here to manifest the money again, because it's not accepting to be dead. Mm-hmm. I've been asking, what do I do for my students? Mm-hmm. So it's also uh, the faith within yourself <coughs> that I had because of sport, martial arts, climbing, succeeding, being strong, powerful, chikung, the sun, and sweating, the muscles, and at the same time, what do I do for my students? Mm-hmm. That makes accumulation of abilities. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is the, the, the key system that I did without knowing. I see. Yes? Thank you. I would say that altogether regarding the, the time that I know you and the way you, you act, here in, in, in the life, it's completely coherent because you commit yourself completely uh, into whatever you decide to do because there is something to discover, there is something to learn, there is something to teach and in fact uh, it is incredible your commitment into teaching, into giving knowledge and help to others and that I can see that you you give like presence all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, no matter, no matter the situation, no matter if it's a nice day or a difficult day or whatever. If there is a situation that you see that you can help, you commit yourself into that, and that fits completely with uh, with the, all the harmony and all the, your testimony, and and at the same time. Uh, it is true that you have also developed a lot of abilities because you worked very hard and to achieve this level so I cannot deny at all I mean uh, like him like John I, I would like also to have this uh, possibility maybe but it is true that uh, there is much more needed and I must develop a lot of commitment and, and then the will it's not about selfishness at all selfishness at all that you do it it's completely the opposite so it fits completely with the with the story the commitment and the fact that you finally when you are going to ask something it's not even for yourself and today you keep doing the same with the people around you so yeah you, you have to be open on the subtlety that they can use for instance I give another example that might be um, useful for you because you have to learn to be open I mean the connection is already existing mm-hmm. Now, the point is that you have to learn to watch some details without being hysterical, you know. I knew a guy who was meditating and saying every time that he meditates, there are birds passing by. And uh, he said, it's my meditation. I said, no, the morning, the birds are flying there. Mm. They go from the, the, the dustbin to the sea. It's uh, <coughs> uh, seagulls moving every morning. So if you sit there or not, the birds are passing by. So <coughs> there, are, there are realities, but... Um, at the same time, you have to learn to be to be uh, open on some details because the spirits are already there to show you some stuff. But very often you don't see because you 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 expect something that you have decided. If you don't write on a piece of paper this, I don't believe in you. It's not working like this. You cannot blackmail. Blackmail. Is a, is a religious practice of this society, you know. And for instance, I remember that when Omram started to to talk to me directly, I had difficulties because instead of a speech of two or three hours, it was a speech of one or two or three minutes. So I was losing, you know, in the story. And then I understood. I said, I have to develop a better concentration. So I have to find out the way how to develop a better concentration. 
So I was asking, how could I develop a good contact, an intense contact, as I could do before through my girlfriend, a long contact. And in the, in the evening, I practiced an exercise of meditation, the best exercises I knew to develop the concentration, but to have the answer, how do I do that? And I practice a lot, but I don't have any answer. Then there's even an exercise that you practice in your bed, that is a very special way to fall asleep and so on, to get the answer. And I thought with a dream, I will get the answer, I will keep an intense concentration, and I don't have any answer. So in the morning, it is the sunrise, and I say, okay, I'm going to meditate in the sunrise. So I do the meditation of the sunrise. I do pranayama, some exercises of breathing and so on, and I don't have the answer. Then I do some exercises of qigong, and, and I don't get the answer. Then there's an exercise of, on a tree to exchange the, the, the energy of the tree. It's something very special, very specific that I learned with Omaram before and I don't have the answer. Then I harmonize with the complete forest. I try to feed the forest around me because I was in the forest at the top of a small of a, a hill, and I don't have the answer. And I thought it's complete failure. And because I am polite and respectful, I use just a sort of salutation for the entities and the forest, in spite of failing. And when I did that, there's something going through me, <laughs> so intense and powerful, with the very strong answer, very clear. You have your answer, work each second. And then I understood that everything that I was doing was the answer. Mm -hmm. So in fact, when I started to receive the answer, like something that I wanted to hear, you have to do that and that, I was already receiving the answer. And every time that I said it's a failure, I didn't have the answer, in fact I was already practicing what I had to practice. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have the final answer, I believe it's a failure. That's how I thought. But because I am honest, humble, and I said thank you to the forest, and so on, just in my way of practice, there I received the answer. You have your answer each second. Work each second. And when you have that, you say, wow, if I invent everything, I'm a fantastic genius. <laughs> so anywhere there's a genius, I don't care. It's maybe it's me, maybe it's them, I don't care. And then I worked um, the weekend in a place that was extremely, extremely violent. With teenagers, we had to fight very often. It was extremely, extremely violent. It was in the first morning that I did that, just after that I was going to work. I had teenagers that were devils for two days, they are angels. No one is moving, they are charming, they are nice. And I, I really saw there's something coming from me. These kids that are so terrible, they're totally transformed. And I leave the weekend after this fantastic weekend with these kids that were devils with knives and aggressing each other and doing tortures, really, and you have babies for, for, for two days, angels and so on. <coughs> I leave. I take my car and I, I thought, I don't know what's happening to me, but there is something incredible happening to me. And then you have something going through you with a very strong sentence, be humble, the pride is a shield against your, your guide. <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, when you accumulate the results, these sentences, just too, too, too powerful, too, too magical to, to stay, uh, you know, you don't care about this. But you have to know that it's not always coming as you want. Like the answer about how do I int intensify the connection, when you believe that you have the failure, you have the answer, mm -hmm. and so on. So you have to know that for that you have to be honest, humble, and open. And sometimes it's not the form that you want it. In, in, in an idea, um, um, the, you, you, you go to see a medium, I don't say that it's the good way, because a lot of them are completely crazy, you go to see a medium because you wanted to have an answer, like, uh, like uh, I don't know what, uh, is my, my boyfriend in love with me, you know, 
and and the woman you ask and she's not really able to answer and so on and you are so disappointed and after that you 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 meet uh, a neighbor when you go back home and the neighbor is telling you you have so much love it's so so clear in your face you are so happy and you are unable to listen to that because you wanted to have the answer from the medium but it's the, your neighbor that is giving the answer mm -hmm. so it, it is you have to develop this 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 opening this, uh, I have um, a friend, she went to see a medium that is quite well known in the south of France and uh, she wanted to have different answers about her, her life but she was wondering about me, you know, uh, yeah, because at that time she heard that I could do a lot of stuff so is it true, is it not true and she, she, was, she did it in a clear way because she took a picture that she had for me and she asked the medium, she said, what can you tell me about this man? And the medium looked at that and she said, I cannot tell you anything about him, but if one day is available that he comes to me, he could tell me a lot of things about me. Which was a way to have her answer. Mm -hmm. So she said, please, if you meet him, ask him to come because he's much better than I am. Mm -hmm. So I cannot tell him anything about him. Very often you have some answers that you don't expect. And... Uh, the fact that you want the life to be absolutely like this is sometimes wrong. You have to keep a certain will, but also to be really available with the form of answers it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Anything. That's all. Anna, you want to say something or nothing? You are traumatized? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm choked. Uh, I don't know. Okay. It's normal. You, in our society, we believe so much in everything around us. This around us that is killing our biosphere, our existence, our future, our dreams, our hopes. And when we meet something else, we say, well, yeah, maybe, but maybe not. And you have to learn that the, not maybe not, but the for sure not is coming from this world. Because if I take this world in the situation that it is, there is no future, there is nothing. So I don't say that it's not because there is nothing that we should be crazy, but at least we should develop an opening to consider um, what is possible or not. Yes? Mm -hmm. And after that, you, you can see what's going to happen, and the reality of all of, all of this. Can I stop or? For me, yes. Yeah, I'll yeah. say yes. Okay, so that's all. So it's a chapter that is a bit different because a little bit more active, and I hope that for you it's also interesting to have uh, an explanation like this. Of course, the story is far from being over, and you are going to discover a lot of stuff from Omram and also from Peter Dunov, Ben Saduno, and you might be surprised of what you're going to discover because thanks to the intensity of the light we can also discover the darkness and when we discover the darkness it's very tough and you are so afraid of the darkness that it is why you don't want to receive the light because if you receive the light you have to face the darkness that is within ourselves and in our surrounding so if we don't receive the light we don't have to look at the darkness and that's part of the initiation. You have to know the intensity of the light. And you have to know about the intensity of the darkness. And you have to be open on the light and on the love. When I met some years later, um, I will go back to that, Gita Malash, who wrote Dialogue with the Angel. Because I was a little bit in the same story. When I, I met her, I said, um, I will go back with this meeting later, but I said, Gita, when the angels talk to you, because it was an open mind, so people were asking about very technical stuff, and for me I said, when the angel talked to you, your heart exploded of love. You were so happy, you were transformed by the intensity of this fantastic joy and happiness and love. You are not afraid to lose that, to forget it one day, because of the life. And when I, I ask these questions, 
for me, I was asking a question about the book. Like somebody was understood, but she understood that I was talking about something else because it was a true direct question. It was not the question of somebody who was only read, who read only the book, but somebody who knew more. So she smiled. And some others, they had a very, very long answers. And in my case, she just said, um, you cannot forget this. It's part of you forever. This is what you became. That's all. So I could have said, ah, come on, talk more. I mean, the others, they had 20 minutes or half an hour. And, so. <laughs> and that's all. And after that, when she left, it was in a cinema, so she had to, it was not a special room for that. So she had to walk. Uh, through the people and she, when she walked through the people she passed by my side and she just stopped once again she put her hand on my shoulder she leaned she leaned to me and she whispered in my ear it's good what's happening to you go on so the connection was just happening and there you see this network of light that is everywhere when you open something mm -hmm. yes when I when I <clears throat> was only in contact with uh, Omram through my girlfriend, in fact, I had to meet two girls because Omram already said, I'm going to prepare something special. So you have to work with these two girls. They were pretty well known in the school because they were able to do some fantastic stuff. And in fact, through what they did, they, they, they changed something to make things possible so that I started to be in contact with him directly. So it was a little bit before the end where he said, I will not come anymore. So um, he told me, you have to contact the two girls and you are going to work with them. Two women and you're going to work with them. So what do I do in the morning? I call them. I say, uh, I would like to work with you and so on. And they say, ah, really? Ah, yeah, of course. But you know, you have a list of two years to be able to work with us because we are overbooked and a lot of people are asking huh? Oh? okay uh, I was a bit surprised because Omram in the night is telling me you have to work with the two sisters and so I call and they said not before two years so there uh, weird isn't it so I said mm, okay well I didn't okay uh, and then the girl has like something but she doesn't tell me what she says, you know what, in your case, I have a doubt. I'm going to check something. You call me back in one hour, and I tell you. So I was a bit close. I said, uh, yeah, okay. I thought, diary, whatever. Okay, uh, then I will call back in one hour, the afternoon, I've forgotten. So I called back and said, okay, come tomorrow morning. I said, nothing. I didn't say, you know, somebody told me. I didn't insist at all. And she just said, okay, come tomorrow morning. And when I came, I said, what changed your point of view? And she said, we have been checking differently. So they were discreet as well. But after that, when you know a lot of stuff afterwards, ah, oh, yeah, I see. And they also became friends and we worked with them, but years later. Mm. And so on. So you have to, to open your eyes to see what is around you. And if for somebody like Anna who is discovering all of this is troubled, you have to, to, to wonder who is crazy. The guy who is obsessed about his job, who is treating you like a piece of shit, who is lying in spite of the contract that he signed with you, who is betraying his girlfriend, who is not respecting his kids, or somebody like me. We have to take the globality of the craziness of these so wise people from this so wise society. It's another aspect of the problem that you have to take um, consideration, under consideration as well, to see the globality of the problem, of the craziness. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you too.